Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about how you can store API keys on your app or your front-end uh, client. So actually, this is a bit of an irony because the rule of thumb is that you should never store sensitive keys on your client. So if you look at my screen right now, I'm on this Medium uh, post that's written by Swift India. So these people are really smart. And um, in short, uh, you can read all about it. This is quite a long article. In short, they don't advise storing API keys on the front end. But if you have to, then I'm going to show you a very convenient way to do that. All right. So uh, you can check out these, uh, this article and even uh, over here <laughs> on Reddit over here. Is there a best practice for hiding API keys? The short answer is that um, you should never store API keys on the front end. But you know, for whatever reason, you have to do that. Then um, let me show you the more nicer way to do that. All right, so I have um, the project over here that I'm going to show you how uh, we can uh, code this together. So let me show you how, what this project is all about. Okay, so this is a very simple Xcode project. We have a uh, single view application with a label. Okay, so you see over here. So whenever I, okay, so over here, I have some API keys that I've already put into the property list. So if you see over here, you should be very familiar with the info.p list. Over here, I've created another property list called debug-keys. Okay, we have this uh, key over here called service API key. So that can be any service, your Firebase service, your analytics service, whatever service, okay? So this is for the debug uh, environment. And then over here, we have the production environment again. So we also have the same key, service uh, underscore API dot key. So if you see over here, the value reflects the key name, uh, sorry, the, reflects the environment name, prod12345. And for debug, I put that as debug12345. All right, so uh, yeah, look, look what happened when I run the app. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm on debug mode. Sorry, the debug uh, build. When I hit the play button, I'm going to see, I think you can kind of guess it already, debug one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then if I am to switch that to release build, all right, let's run this. You will obviously see prod one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can write this in a more elegant way. Okay, so uh, if you if I give you a quick look over here, so we, this is our view controller really small, as you can see, it's like less than 10 lines. And over here, what I do is that I reference something called environment, and it has the uh, uh, property service API key. Over here, this is the implementation how I, um, I configure it. So rather than showing this to you, I'm going to maybe walk you through a brand new project so that you can understand the chain of thought. And hopefully, if you still want to store your API keys on the front end, this could be a more elegant, elegant way to do that. All right, are you ready to get started? Okay, let's open up a brand new Xcode project. All right, guys, I'm a bit panting over here because my child just contracted COVID, and uh, it's 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 quite a, it's quite a tough time. So uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so let's call this uh, API keys demo. All right, hit the next button. And then I'm gonna start this project. Oops, let's see, can I start somewhere? Oh, I already have this already. Okay, hold on guys. Let's call this dash two. Okay, so let's start by um, setting up the main.storyboard. So let's go to main and then let's bring in a label. So if you guys are wondering, this is like kind of day two. So I'm having a, I'm a bit short of breath. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so let's increase the font size to 24. Let's make this really big. And we wanna add the uh, IB outlet into the view controller. So I'm gonna just break this out of the way. And from time to time, I'm just going to glance over there just to use that as reference, okay? Okay, let me just bring this to, let's fit the screen here. Okay, so let's hit the alternate button, click on view controller to bring that to the side. And then we can connect the IB outlet. So just call this label, really simple. All right, so let's assume we have a service, API key. Let's start by creating those property lists, okay? So let's come over here, right click, go to new file, and then let's select, uh, let's filter by property list. All right, so this is basically your, your .plist file. Okay, let's call this uh, debug uh, dash keys. Okay, just like that, hit the enter button. And then I'm gonna create another one over here. So right click, go to new file, uh, again, property list. <clears throat> Let's call this um, prod-keys. 
All right, so as you can see, the format is kind of similar. I'm just uh, putting in the environment name in front uh, just to prefix the P list. All right, the next thing we want to do is let's come back to the view controller and then uh, let's see, uh, what do I want to do over here? Okay, so we're going to create a environment um, object and I want to have a bit of subclassing over here so that uh, I can make this uh, really clean to see. So guys, uh, just follow along because uh, you may not really understand what I'm doing right now, but I, I, I promise you that over time you, you really understand this. Okay, so I'm going to create something called a base environment. And the purpose of this base environment is to reference the plist file, the property list file, okay? So let's uh, create an initializer. Okay, and then I need to do gutlet file name equals to bundle.main.path for resource. Okay, and then I want to be able to pass in the name of the plist. So I'm going to type in resource name as a string, okay? So I'm just going to pass this over here and of type, this will be a plist. Okay, and then I want to be able to get the plist. So let plist equals to ns dictionary content of file. And then this will be a file. Oh, sorry guys. This is file path, not file name. File path. So file path over here. Um, else fatal error. Okay, I'm going to say couldn't, couldn't find file plist. Okay, maybe I can just do it this way. Resource name plist so that it's really uh, specific. Okay, I think I can close this right now. And then what we want to do is we want to be able to assign this uh, plist over here. So let's do let um, dick. This is of type ns dictionary. And then I'm going to do self.dick equals to plist. All right, so let me just bring this to the bottom over here. Let me do command B to make sure that it's still building correctly. And uh, you know what? Let's choose uh, maybe a nicer one, iPhone 13 Pro. Okay, so this is good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create the two different environments. So of course, we have the debug environment as well as the production environment. So let's get started. So let's do class. Let's call this um, debug environment. And I want to subclass base, okay? So that I will, uh, I can uh, not duplicate my code when I create the production environment as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do init and I'm going to do super.init and I'm going to pass in the resource name. So what is the resource name? It's this one over here. Okay, so let me just copy this and then let's come back and paste this over here. All right, and then next I'm going to create the production environment. So class prod, oops, prod, env, again, base environment. Let me just copy the entire thing over here. And then this will be prod, okay? So this name has to match these two names over here, right? So now uh, let's bring in, uh, let's introduce a API key. Okay, so let's come over here and then let's uh, let's assume you have some kind of service. It could be, a, it could be an analytics, it could be Firebase, you know, uh, whatever. Let's just call this service API key. Just like that. And then for the string, I'm going to make this easy to, uh, to, to identify. So I'm, go I'm going to call this debug one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then Oops, I missed the I over here. So I'm going to copy this again and, and just uh, create the key inside the, uh, the prod keys. And then same thing for the value PRO prod one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now let's go back to our view controller and then I have to define those keys inside over here, all right? So the best way to do that in my view is to create some kind of protocol so that uh, once you define that, you know, we, we ensure that we will specify that inside the debug environment as well as the product environment, as well as the prod environment. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let me reference. <laughs> okay, so let's create a protocol here first and then let's call this API Key bro. Okay, I mean, you can choose whatever name you want, but basically this, uh, this name is to say that, okay, we, we have to define these keys. So let's call this uh, var service API key. And then this will be of string type. All right, again, if this is a Boolean, 
uh, then you can specify that if it's a double, then you can specify that as well. Okay, so now this environment, uh, sorry, this debug environment as well as the prod environment will conform to this API cable protocol. So let's just put that in. And now it's going to complain because we have to uh, have this property inside both uh, uh, environments. So command B Xcode is going to complain. Let's just use the helper over here. Let's, let me just bring that to the bottom. Okay, so how do I get the API key? So I have to do uh, dick. Okay, where do I get this dick from? I get this from the base class, which is this guy over here. So now you understand why I wrote the base class. Okay, so I'm going to do dot object for key. And then what the key is, we know that the key is service API key. All right, so this value has to match this value over here. All right. So again, feel free, you know, you can create and you can create some kind of enum if you want to. Maybe I'll show that to you later. Okay, but I don't want to confuse you too much first. So let's do it this way as string or empty string. Okay, again, feel free to implement this uh, however you way you want. You can set this to return a failure error if you want to, you know, if you're that brief. Okay, we're gonna do okay, what else? Uh why is it complaining? Mm, what's this? Um, what's the problem? Okay, I think it's fine. Okay, so let's do that for the prod environment. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing as well. And uh, I think we don't have to make any other changes. <clears throat> All right, so now, now this is the interesting part. So we have to be able to switch between the environments, okay? So I'm gonna do uh, Let's create a variable over here. So maybe you can, maybe this should be inside the uh, app delegate. Okay, so let's come over here, uh, and it has to be outside of the um, the class because we want to make this a global uh, function. Oh, sorry, global uh, property. So var environment, and this will be of type API keyable. Okay, so we are able to uh, check what is the environment to return the correct debug environment or the product uh, or the production environment. Okay, so I'm going to do if uh, debug and then I'm going to do uh, else and and if. Okay, so if we are on the debug view, then I'm going to return debug env. Otherwise, I'm going to return prod env. All right, guys, I hope you are following, okay? So command B now to build this and build succeeded. That's great. Okay, so now let's come to view controller and then inside over here, inside the view did load, we can do label.txt and then we can immediately access um, the API key by typing in env because we specified this as a global property. So when you do a dot, we get these properties and these properties are not from the concrete class but rather from the protocol properties and that's why um, it's, it's actually pretty convenient and a, a very reliable way to ensure that you don't make careless mistakes okay when you implement a, a protocol all right so just like that and then let's see if this is working okay so let's hit the play button and I think we have to wait for a little while okay so let's wait for a little while for this to show up All right, guys, so as you can see, we have debug one, two, three, four, five. And then right now, if we are to switch the environment, let's go to release. Then I would expect <clears throat> to kind of see our prod one, two, three, four, five. So let's see. Oh, this one over here. Yep, prod one, two, three, four, five. All right, guys, so uh, is this the one? No, iPhone 13 Pro. Let me just run that again because I have the other simulator on the right side. So let's do that one more time. All right, so Pro 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, guys, so probably to take this a bit, a bit further, the question to ask is, if let's say I have more than one API keys, how do I do that? So again, very simple. Let's come in over here, debug, and then let's bring in maybe service B API. Uh, or let's call this service uh, client ID. Okay, so this is also quite popular. So let's call this debug client ID one two three four five, and then let's come back to prod. Let's create. Okay, let me not make a careless mistake. So I'm just gonna copy everything over here, and then just get this. Come over here. Let's call this production. All right, just like that. 
Okay, so I hope that this is easy to understand. So again, come over over here. Let's call this service client ID. All right, so guys, just want to let you know that this variable doesn't have to match this over here. But I would think that it's more consistent, okay, if you are to match that. And then now uh, Xcode is going to prompt you because uh, we need to fulfill the uh, the contract. So let's go with service client ID uh, dick dot object for key service. Uh, let me just copy this over here. And then I'm going to copy the whole thing here as well. So maybe it can be like that. Okay, so now let's come back to the view controller and let's call this service client ID. Let's hit the play button. I believe I'm still on the production view. So I should see production client ID 12345. All right, guys, I hope that this has been helpful. So again, if you want to take this even further, if you want to over engineer your code, all right, let me show you how to over engineer your code. So guys, when you do this, it may look really simple to you, but the next guy who is going to take over your code is going to Kao be Kao Bu because it's going to have a hard time trying to understand what you're writing. But I'm going to show you how to do that anyway, okay? <laughs> so let's come to the base ENV and then maybe we can create an enum over here. Let's call this keys and then we can call this, um, let's call this var, oh sorry, case, uh, service API key. I think you can do it like that. Case, uh, service client ID. Let's make this conform to a string. And then I believe you can come over here and just do a uh, key dot service. Oh, can you do that? Oh, sorry, it's key. Let's try that again. Service client API key dot raw value. Over here, you can do key dot service client ID dot raw value. I believe everything is going to work as well. So I think what I want to avoid here is to have hard coded strings. All right, so it's, it's still working. All right, guys, thanks for sticking all the way. It's the 20, 20th minutes now, and uh, I hope you learned something. And uh, let me know what you think about this approach, whether it's good, it sucks, whether you think it's a bit too complicated. Let me know in the comments section below. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye-bye.